is uh, Jonathan Waggies right here, old friend. We've got Sean O'Brien coming down. We're in the middle of the giant sequoia area, and there are giant sequoias around. I see a couple right there. It is an absolute gorgeous day. The scaling methods for old growth redwood logs are pretty brutal, and uh, you're not going to like what I'm going to tell you. Well. Maybe you will, but the owner of the logs is not going to like it. Yeah, discount the sapwood? There is no sapwood on these. The tree's dead. It's a snag. Hey, there's the monument right there. Monument, yeah. Boy, they took the tree down there, so that just, that's the monument. They, they took it from there. Oh. He's talking about uh, putting a tree house on there. Oh, Jesus. These people up here are absolutely crazy. <laughs> uh, Even somebody climbed up there and put a tarp over it. Oh, God. Jeez. Oh, I don't know. Just an old fossil lumber blogger mountain man, but that, I don't know. I'm too practical to be thinking about shit like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there's no need. You're preaching to the choir here. <laughs> if it had been my tree, we would cut it off at the stump, loaded it on a truck, and got it out of here. Yep. And made some money, or not made money, but it made some money. And uh, the owner was pretty particular about not... Touching anything. Doing anything, any impact on the law. Well, we're good crack here. So you're, you're, you're saying, uh, Jonathan, that he's not going to be happy about it because of uh, the defect numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're at uh, 63. No, it's been measured at the small end. So is it tip? This is the snow. Yeah, this is the butt end here. Bring your tape down from here, and let's see where the cut mark is. There's some cut marks right there. See what you got. Ooh, let's go to the other side. Yeah, he's, uh, the, <coughs> the other said, hey, they're six foot long. Six foot diameter. Well, now, now you see here, this is what I'm looking at here. Yeah. And it's not going to be 10 feet. We're at 113. How many feet is that? It's That's nine foot five. Oh, five. Yep, and it's less than that actually because you couldn't get on the. Yeah. It's actually under nine and it's right about nine. Yeah. Okay. The sapwood is, we won't even scale it. No. It's gone. So the log will be scaled here, about an inch inside. And if we don't scale from this well, end. Yeah, no, let's, do it. Well, let's go down and look. See if you can get your tape in there. Cut mine. I'll get on the other side. I won't get the tape in there. You got to peel back that stuff and he's going to get pissy about that. Well, I'll just What's that going to do for I'm off down here. They're... So they got to get into the cut line. They yeah. cut the tab off the end of their tape. Oh, to slide it through? Slide it through. Yeah, you never... Cut the tab off my tape. Never tape it from the big end unless you... Or yeah. you're, unless you're the owner of it. <laughs> you're not going to eyeball it? Can you hold, can you? Well, I can tell you there's very little taper in this thing, and yeah. and then you're you're just going to have to guess. Yeah. So, you, where were you on the diameter side over there with? So, if you're at 58 of heartwood, the math I use puts you at 50 inches down here. Something like that, I would agree. There's another cut line. We'll not even get close on that. Nope, there's nothing here you can get into. Yeah, so this is a... Well, I just want to measure it just to see. Pull the tape down to about an inch inside the sap. Yeah, I can't see where it is. Yeah. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Put right here. Right okay. there. And just eyeball it. Yeah. Okay. We're about 50 inches there. That'd be about 1,900 board feet gross. For a 10-footer? Or a 9-footer? 
successor of 16 to 416. And gentlemen, I'm going to tell you my honest opinion. On this stuff. Yep. Uh, I mean, look at the, the huge cracks here. We got the, the fractures. Well, that's normal, but the, you're not buying this part anyway. You're just buying the two ten footer. Yeah, but look at what and, you got there. And I'm thinking something. Uh, the uh, and yeah, okay. that's not a seasoning crack, is it? it? I don't know what it's. Uh, you can't tell. Yeah, I can't tell. But if you look at what's remaining of the tree, there are cracks in it. So it would be. Oh, so it could be seasoning. I'm pretty sure it is. Hmm. This is both a seasoning and a shape crack. The defect in this tree is horrible. It, this is a cull log. Yeah, yeah, it is. Now, if this log was sitting on the road and it was five hundred dollars for both of them, I'd take them. But that yeah. would be about it. There is just okay. not, there's nothing here. I that, that's what we're here for. Find that that there's information out. There, we did, there's no pictures of uh, of the logs that they on that video. No. And you're not going to get a ten footer out of this, so you're going to be some volume loss there. Yeah. So you only in, got... in the scale. If you followed the scaling rules, that'd be scaled at an eight foot log. <laughs> we had a guy. I'll tell you this interesting story. Yeah. And even even then, they don't scale the, anything. If it were a smaller log, eight foot would be also be a cold log. Yeah, because the mills won't take it. They don't foot. take anything. Yeah. Well, they would take this. The specialty they, only. They could saw it. See, their sawmill won't go down to eight feet. It's got to be ten feet to get it on a sawmill. But there's enough here. Yeah. Somebody would would a want it like if it were a whole log. A guy like me would just cull a foot off of it and call it good. But the point I'm, uh, a, a guy came in one time. This Mexican guy, and he had a truck and trailer load of burnt pine logs. Mm -hmm. They weren't bad looking logs and he got them down to Southern California and FEMA was paying to, it was when they had that big insect epidemic down there that killed off 400,000 acres of pine mm -hmm. down there in San Bernardino around Lake Arrowhead. And this Mexican dude came in and he was kind of an entrepreneur. And so he got this load of logs for free and FEMA paid him eight or nine hundred dollars just to haul them off someplace. So he brought them to me and said, you want to buy them? Yeah, I guess so. And so, but I want to scale them before I buy them. And I had a, uh, uh, a guy working in my yard. He was building a log home. And he contracted with me to cut the logs for his log home. And I didn't have time to do it. And so uh, I just rented in my sawmill. And I helped him and taught him how to run the band mill and he could do it himself. And this guy was a certified scaler. He'd worked for the state. He was a forester for the state for 30 years. He knew how to scale logs. And I said, well, while I'm unloading this truck, I, we can't run the mill because I can't feed logs to you. So would you be kind enough to scale these? And he's over there scaling away like mad. And he kept shaking his head. He kept shaking his head, shaking his head. And I got done unloading and put the guy's trailer back on. And Okay, what's the story? Why are you over here shaking your head? He said, all these logs are exactly 32 feet long. <laughs> There's no trim. They're supposed to be 30 32, feet. Yeah, okay. 33 feet. And so we paid him. We, he got, okay. So on a short log scale, he would have been paid for a 14-footer. For a 14 and a 16. Wow. Yeah. And uh, God, that guy was mad. And I said, hey. I'll follow the rules. He didn't cut them. Book says two feet if you don't meet the trim allowance. Yeah. And and I've seen loggers who've cut timber for years that didn't know what the trim allowance meant. I took them in the sawmill and showed them why they put trim allowance on. These guys would buck logs in the middle of a crook. They didn't know it's 16 yeah. cut it off. Buck that crook out and the scale goes way up. <laughs> They didn't know. Nobody bothered to tell them. And it was like some of these guys had cut timber for over 20 years and didn't know why the log was 16 foot 6 inches or 33 feet long. And I said, well, there's a trim allowance on it so you can square the boards up when you're done. And that's what it's for. And you don't meet the trim allowance, uh, it's, uh, it's, you're penalized. Oh, jeez. <laughs> They really ought to take every timber faller that works for the sawmill and run them through, take them on a tour of the sawmill and explain how things well, work. Why you need the, the University of Oregon 
did a study a long time ago. I can't tell you everything you need to know about it, but they went up on an active logging site and they were they were hand falling trees and they scaled the logs as they were plucked. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole idea was bucking logs, not cutting. Okay. And so then they came back and they put on a class. Here's how to buck logs for maximum value. And taught the fallers how to do it. And they got somewhere between 10 and 15 percent more wood off the same yeah. logs by bucking them correctly rather than just bucking them to formula. And you know when I studied forestry and, and you know we were acquainted with that immediately when we had to deal with logs and, and timber is, is it, you know, look at your logs before you start bucking them. And I bucked a lot of logs over the years and I got whacked a couple times because I was being stupid. <laughs> and so when it comes out of your wallet, you learn quickly. Yes, that's so, a fact. Let's take a look at this, what's left of this standing thing here. <laughs> no doubt about it. Those are what? Those are seasoning checks. Yeah. What's happening is, is as the tree dries out, it shrinks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And the only thing it can do is check. Yep, dries and checks. And it gets smaller in diameter, so something's got to give. That's it. Uh, God, what a tree. What a tree. It's not a massive God. tree. I know, they get bigger than this, that's for sure. The biggest one I ever cut was 22 feet. <laughs>